That's tea. <laughs> hey, everyone, and welcome to our weekly blessing for those who mourn. Today is July 3rd. Happy almost 4th of July, if you are someone who celebrates that. And the numbers for today are that 131,000 individuals in the United States have died from the coronavirus, and that's 521,000 worldwide. So we have now um, surpassed, surpassed the half million point um, with coronavirus deaths. This service that we have today, oh, by the way, my name is Megan. I'm at Grace Lutheran in San Francisco, and I have with me Amanda Zenzalo, and I serve at Central Lutheran in Northeast Portland, Oregon. And this service that we have each week is a blessing for those who mourn. It began as a blessing for those who are mourning uh, loved ones, those who are grieving, uh, coronavirus deaths. It has, it has expanded to include other fuller parts of grief. Uh, to think about ways in which our lives have changed and we are impacted by those changes, to grieve the ways that racial injustice is prevalent and palpable in our world, to grieve any of the things that are on our heart that we would like to spend some time with. And it also gives us the opportunity then uh, to have a similar transition that happens right before Easter. Good Friday, we, we are very morose, we're talking about death, and then on Easter it's a little bit more celebratory. And so just giving space to what is hard so that on another day we can give space to what is going well and what we are thankful for. You are invited to be fully embodied during the time that we are having this worship service. Take in the scents that are around you, the smells, Take in the things that are beautiful and look around your space. If you have comforting or soft fabrics near you, you are invited to engage your senses. Anything that helps you remember that you have a full body, wiggle your toes, itch your nose if you need to get it out and know that you are fully welcome in this place. We gather here in the presence of God in our need and bringing with us the needs of the world. We come to you for you come to us in Jesus and you know by experience what human life is like. We come with our faith and with our doubts. We come with our hopes and with our fears. We come as we are because you invite us to come and you have promised never to turn us away. Our reading for today is a poem, <clears throat> excuse me, a poem by Lee Young Lee, and it is called From Blossoms. From Blossoms comes this brown paper bag of peaches we bought from the boy at the bend in the road where we turned toward signs painted peaches. From laden boughs, from hands, from sweet fellowship in the bins, comes nectar at the roadside, succulent peaches we devour, dusty skin and all. Comes the familiar dust of summer, dust we eat. Oh, to take what we love inside, to carry within us an orchard, to eat not only the skin, but the shade, not only the sugar, but the days. To hold the fruit in our hands, adore it, then bite into it the round jubilance of peach. There are days we live as if death were nowhere in the background. From joy to joy to joy, from wing to wing, from blossom to blossom to impossible blossom to sweet, impossible blossom. Today, I thought we would talk a little bit about food because that's a nicer way of saying that today we're going to talk about the way stress 
messes up your gastrointestinal system. Um, when people are grieving, commonly one of the ways that people care for them is they show up at their house with casserole. Sometimes they just leave it with a note on the front porch if you are living in a place where porches are a thing. Um, sometimes you just bring sweets or treats and sometimes you leave a little bit of masking tape on the bottom of the, of the dish so that they can easily give you the dish back at the end of their time consuming it. Part of the reason that people bring casseroles is number one, it's a tangible thing you can do to mm -hmm. show that you care about someone. Oftentimes in the oldie times, remember that? When we were grieving, a bunch of people would come to our house to be with us. <laughs> ye oldie times. In ye oldie times. Uh, Six in, months ago. <laughs> and so oftentimes it would mean that you both had something painful and, t and tough happen to you and you have house guests. And so that people are trying to relieve you of some of the tasks that come along with having a lot of house guests. Um, and maybe relieve you of some of the expense that could come along with what's going to transpire over the next couple of days. Another part of the reason that people bring casseroles is because when we have a crisis, when we have stress, when we have an emergency, when we are in pain, our body shuts down most of those senses that I walked you through at the beginning of our worship service. To just do the essential functions we need to survive each day. And by survive each day, I don't mean eat food and drink water. I mean that our bodies are just trying to stay safe. Our bodies are in emergency mode. We get tunnel vision. So you might notice if you're driving and you're stressed <laughs> and you don't physically turn your neck and look all the way around, you're like, where did that person come from? I didn't see them at all when you're driving, right? So we have to be really careful to make sure we're doing that. When we are stressed, our breathing slows down and we get so nervous that our breathing is slowing down that sometimes we try to breathe consciously. And if you've ever tried to breathe consciously, doing something consciously that's supposed to happen automatically screws it all up. <laughs> And so that means when people are trying to breathe, they try to breathe in a lot because they're afraid they're not getting any air because their breathing has slowed down and they'll breathe faster and faster and faster when really what you need to do is make sure your out breaths are longer. And so counting can help calm that down a little bit. And, and I think there are a number of people who have seen on, on television the ways that stress affects us and people are talking more openly about it during this time of the coronavirus, particularly because papers say that over 50% of our United States has severe depression right now. And so there are people who are talking about ways to, you know, look and help with the vision changes. There are ways that we're working with people to help them meditate and work on their breathing, but very few people are talking about the extra farts that they have, <laughs> right? That their bowel movements might not be regular, uh, that, that they forget to eat entirely because they aren't having sensations within their body, that if they're not regularly paying attention to how many liquids they're taking in, they might get extra dehydrated migraines, extra dehydration, extra lots of different symptoms coming from, thank you, Pastor Amanda for uh, hydrating. Uh, you're a good role model, <laughs> right? And so if you have found that your system is a little bit out of whack, I promise not to talk about BMs very often in our worship service, but I want to give you permission to just know that it's not necessarily because you're eating in rushed ways. It's not necessarily only because restaurants are different and whatever schedule you had for eating when people could be in groups, whatever schedule and method you had for eating when going to the grocery store was less scary and you could take your time or you could plan what you wanted to buy. 
whatever schedule you had for how you would intake food into your body when you could go to a store and know it might be on the shelf. All of those changes are affecting us, but aren't necessarily things that everyone is talking about out loud. I know about a lot of these dietary changes because first responders, people who, whose job it is to be stressed out just all of the time, there are actual classes for them to teach them how their digestive system is going to change after certain amounts of times of prolonged stress. Wow. So, um, what that means is after a certain amount of time, the, the stress is going to disrupt your sleep pattern, right? The disruption to your sleep pattern is also going to change your food pattern, right? Because if you're not sleeping the parts of the day when you would eat at certain times, whatever your food routine is, is going to be, it's going to be very different. Um, your body, your body might reject some of the food that you put in it. Because during this time that you're stressed out, if you're putting a lot of acid in your stomach, orange juices and, and tomatoes and things like that, that might be comfort foods for you, your stomach is just going to go, no. <laughs> and I told you I wouldn't tell you a direction, but your stomach is not going to want extra acids because stress is creating acids. When you see the news and you see a traumatic event, your body releases the same chemicals as if you are giving birth. Adrenaline and cortisol. And we're used to talking about what, what that effect looks like on mothers after giving birth, but we're not used to talking about what happens if instead of what normally would happen, say you have a car accident, and a few weeks later, you're like, oh, I'm just agitated. I'm just stressed out. My body is just out of whack. And it might mean the muscles and the bones in your body are out of whack, but you also mean it feels like your nervous system is itchy inside of you, right? And you might be grumpier and shout at people. And what happens if what you normally would do is flush those chemicals, right? After a week, those chemicals would release from your body and you might go back to normal. But if every time you turn on the news, words like Fauci, spike, curve, shooting, protest, if words like that make your chemicals go again and you don't flush them, they stay inside of your liver, they stay inside of your pancreas, they stay inside of your kidney and they stay inside of your stomach. So all of the organs that are supposed to help you digest your food have adrenaline and cortisol that's not being released. These are the same parts of your body that help you like help caffeine get regulated. So if normally a certain amount of cup of coffee was like, oh, I'm, I'm good now, but you drink a cup of coffee and you're angrier, it's because those organs are just agitated. Those are the same organs that filter alcohol. So if you thought it was gonna calm down, cause sometimes you drink a beer at the end of the evening or a glass of wine and you have less stress, statistically that's not actually true. For 15 minutes it calms you down, but alcohol is actually an upper. That's a whole nother topic. But just know that all of those organs are agitated. And the same way you notice it when you drink orange juice, or tomato juice with the acid in your stomach, you might not know what it feels like when your liver's like <clears throat> at you because you have all these chemicals that are happening. And so, yes, vitamin C can be helpful. Too much vitamin C can make you feel nauseous, right? Zinc can be helpful. Too much zinc can make you feel nauseous. All of these things adding to your your gastrointestinal discomfort. And this does happen at funerals. People just don't always say it out loud. Um, 
the bathroom line right before a funeral starts can be similar to the nervousness you might feel if you were going to do a play opening night. Funerals can feel like that, not knowing how your emotions are going to be. All of those same symptoms um, can be just how it always feels when you are consistently stressed out. Hopefully, this will only be our reality for maybe a year, right? But having these chemicals inside of our organs for a year will change our organs forever. And so finding ways that you can have new Corona comfort foods that actually are calming those organs uh, could be a new thing to explore if the old comfort foods aren't working well for you. Um, if this goes longer, know that what we know in, in police officers and firefighters who are this stressed all the time, maybe a little higher stressed because there's uh, more danger in their jobs, right? Like running into a fire, not the same as coronavirus, but similar, it's the only kind of comparable thing we have for what happens to your, for those organs. Um, there, there are some studies that three to four years of this much stress and, and people will oftentimes develop cancer in their digestive organs. Um, and some chronic sleeping issues and things that last a little longer. So um, might be something to think about if you're also trying to figure out how to reform police systems right now is know that there's no human being who can be that stressed from viewing that many things who doesn't have their system rewired no, no matter what's going on for them kind of prior to having that job. And I wonder how much some of this kind of uh, impact of long-term mm -hmm. cortisol and long-term adrenaline is also part of what creates such a disparity within the Black and Indigenous population for their health challenges. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you see it uh, in the LGBT community as well. Yep, They'll talk yep. about groups having disproportionate health impacts, which mostly mm -hmm. just means they're stressed out a lot yep. because of living in poverty for a long time, the effects of discrimination, um, maybe not having access to different kinds of foods that can help you regulate. So what mm -hmm. is helpful? What is helpful for gastrointestinal life? Here's the advice I'm gonna give you that I really should follow and for the last three years have not. So I'll just like name that. Cardio, 20 minutes of cardio flushes all those chemicals out of your system. Um, if you've ever wondered why firefighters and police officers do a lot of like weightlifting and, and exercising, it's not just to be good at their job, it's because it helps release some of those chemicals. Um, so if that's a thing you're able to do, if solo exercising works for you, then uh, outdoor solo exercising, um, then that can be really helpful. Um, you will find at a lot of stressful events with first responders, carbonated water. Because carbonated water helps you burp, it helps you not keep in all of the stuff that's happening. So just having, even if carbonated water, you can have a different kind of carbonated, carbonated beverage, but like, again, like sugar dumps are not really helpful right. typically for, for this kind of long-term stress. So just a regular carbonated water can get you through the first 72 hours of your stuff going on whenever a new thing happens. You're watching the news, Anderson Cooper makes you cry, drink some carbonated water, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, or your whatever the environmentally friendly best way for you is soda stream or whatever fancy people do. Um, anything that is gonna help you with fiber is gonna be helpful. Unfortunately, a lot of the things that are going to help you feel good in the short term, so your stomach just doesn't hurt as much, things that are good for 
Um, like if you look up foods people have so that they don't get ulcers essentially, cause that's the acid. Um, a lot of those foods are gonna be bloaty sometimes. Um, some of those foods are gonna not fit the cool diets of the day. Uh, they're going to be kind of carby based rices mm -hmm. and applesauces. And um, what I have bananas, found that I like, rice, applesauce and toast, brat yeah. diet. What I have found that I really like um, is bean chips. They taste like potato chips. So I want to actually eat them, but they are made of beans and they help just with the fiber and regulating the system. Um, so I have been known to skip a meal and just have bean chips, which is not all of my vitamin needs for that day. But if it helps my system uh, stay maintained, I think that's a good thing. Um, the other thing that I want to say is that in times of stress, uh, you might have a loss of time, like not know, like what time of day is it? And so you might forget to eat. You're, you might not have feeling below your neck because you forget that you've, you're more than your brain. And so just skipping meals, like there are people who can skip meals for three to five days and just not notice after a really big traumatic incident. And so if that's your issue, things like boost, uh, having a drink. Uh, I find when I go to scenes where I know people don't wanna eat, they just lost someone in a really terrible way. I always have a boost in my pocket um, and I'll say, I'm going to set a timer. If in two hours you haven't eaten, you have to have this boost. I think they're good. They're like chocolate shakes, right? But most people are like, I'm not going to eat that. That's the worst. And if you say you have to eat in two hours or I'm going to have you do this, they normally choose to eat whatever they like better. Um, but there are some people I've said, I'm going to sit here till you finish it. And I don't care. Uh, because we don't want there to be a second person. Who, like, it's not a good time to go to the hospital, right? If you don't want to be in the hospital. So, And there are different kinds of boost. There are the mm -hmm. thick ones like you're talking about, and there are some clear ones, and mm -hmm. there's options for those there's kinds of supplements. There's some with lower sugar. There are some that mm -hmm. are specifically for individuals who have diabetes, and then mm -hmm. the sugar comes out in different timing. Um, but just there's pedia ones. Mm -hmm. uh, just know that they're an option because um, it's while better everyone, than nothing. While everyone wants a bikini weight, the beaches around here are closed. So uh, the way that I would put it is it's better to be overweight than dead um, and in terms of your emotional health and suicide risk. And right now, eating disorders are likely also spiking. Mm -hmm. And and that is something to recognize that disordered eating yeah. in times of stress can really come back. So if you or someone you love is struggling with disordered eating, making the next best choice that you can make is what is important. If you yeah. are someone who is involved with um, a, a clinic um, like the Cartini Clinic here in Portland that are uh, excellent or different organizations working, especially with the young people who whose bodies are still developing and really need to be able to have nutrition, but they're also in this stressful situation and don't know how to self-manage, yeah. um, making the next best choice. And if that's a boost or if that's a slim fast, or if that's a, you know, anything a to get some calories in, whatever, right? yeah. to get some calories in that stuff matters. Yep. Um, and, and is really important. Absolutely. Yeah. My comfort is usually to like binge eat in the evening. Um, and so if I only have like things that are going to be helpful, like if I only have bean chips, then it's like, it's not good to binge eat in the evening, but at least it's a thing that's going to that's keep something. me regulated and it's a healthy thing that's nearby. Um, if you have kids like I do, um, this would be a good time to be checking their rooms for food that they are hiding, um, particularly foster kids. This is a behavior or any them. kids with major trauma within their past. Yeah, my one of my children was hiding food, not for the purpose of making sure they had it for later, but just because they didn't want to eat. And so they were like dumping soup all over their floor under their bed and it, I'm allergic to mold. So we fixed that problem. That's not mm -hmm. happening anymore. Um, yeah. Only because we made it so there's no space under the bed anymore. 
and all food gets consumed in groups now. And so, yeah. but just check in with kids because there are ways in which their food eating mm -hmm. can change. Um, and sometimes it's just like normal curiosity stuff. And sometimes it's just because you might not have shared this many meals all in the same house before. And you're like, my kids read off how many calories are in each food now. They don't even know what calories mean. They just do it because they heard other people doing that. It's like, yay, we did that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the thing. Yeah. It's, and, and food is a phenomenally more complex and difficult conversation than people recognize, especially if they've not been uh, with or around someone with disordered eat eating patterns before. Mm -hmm. and, and the way that trauma impacts that is pretty substantial. Um, I tend to head, I, and I recognize when I'm doing it now, um, I'm someone that heads towards starchy foods for a multitude of different reasons. One of them is the serotonin hit because uh, potatoes and those kinds of things provide the serotonin hit. Yep. And so I find myself leaning that direction from time to time. Um, and if you're someone who like me battles with dehydration on a fairly consistent basis, yeah. um, there are ways to make certain you can remain hydrated because that really can send you on a really dangerous spiral, um, that could make you need to end up in the ER, which again, we're trying to avoid that. So even if you are eating, you may not be able to keep the food. And then not keeping the food, you start towards dehydration. And once you hit dehydration, you're just tanked. Yeah. So um, there's techniques like oral rehydration solution that you can easily make at home that's made from water and salt and sugar. And so those are you can items get real that- Rehydration packets as well that are like Gatorade weird flavored, but at least you finish yeah. it. Yeah. Whatever's and I have the, I have the Gatorade chews. They actually make like little chewies. Mm. Um, and so I can't handle drinking a full Gatorade anymore because it's associated with the memory of the first time I went to the ER for dehydration. So I'm not a huge fan of Gatorade anymore. Um, but the little chewies are like eating a gummy bear and they're really yummy in the strawberry flavor. So I can have two of those and then drink a big, great big glass of water. Be, which is how your body needs to process those chemicals in the chew um, to help to try to stay hydrated, right? So there's lots of different techniques, but I think, again, recognizing as you're saying that this long to to term, hi self. Sorry, I'm looking at the comments <laughs> in case there's anything else yeah. people want us yeah, to yeah, talk Yeah, about. I guessed as much. Yeah. Um, so the the reality of the impacts of this on our full system is significant. Yeah. And so, so I basically just wanted us to talk about it so that we would know that people could talk about it. If you're noticing these things, there's like a bazillion places you can Google. I'm not a yeah. nutritionist, so you can yeah. find out what's the best information for you. You can probably email your doctor and ask them, Hey, is this fine with my medication um, or your therapist or whoever is advising you on all of the different components of your life and how that works together. But and if just you know, if you or someone you love is struggling with disordered eating in this time, get help, please yes. reach yes. out. That is a, it is a huge and significant um, challenge and you deserve all of the help that you can get in this time. Um, that can have, even as much as depression is hard for all of us, um, in the same way that if someone is having suicidal ideation, they need support systems as much as possible for those who are struggling with disordered eating in a time like this, please yeah. take that incredibly seriously. And as a parent, like I can often tell when my kids are hungry based on when they start fighting with each other. So I can tell that when I start fighting with my spouse, I mean, that's, yeah, right. <laughs> I do the same thing. Right. And so I just want to name that some of the ways that people are agitated right now, and I'm not talking about protest communities because those are all mm -hmm. very valid, right? Some of the ways that people are grumpy right now are related to these chemicals that are going on in their body. Um, and so people shouting at each other if they are wearing a mask or if they're not wearing a mask. Like a lot of this emotional stuff that is coming out is normal stress behavior 
And um, here's the way I'll say it, because I sometimes choose, we live right next to Golden Gate Park and a couple blocks down from the ocean. And there are days when my emotions are more regulated than others, right? Thankfully, I have learned to not like post very many ranty things on the internet on days when I am uh, stressed out and grumpy. But but yes, yeah, so yes, I am curatedly optimistic all the time by intention, <laughs> not because I am a, a perfect human being, right? Right. And so there are times when I'm like, I would love to go on a walk through Golden Gate Park and see the baby bison, but I'm gonna yell at some people on the way, right? <laughs> Cause the bicyclists don't stop at stop signs at like whatever list I could come up with. If you do it, I'm, I'm just trying to make a list about things that agitate me when I'm hungry and I didn't drink enough water. I'm, a, I, I'm inherently lawful good. And so I'm that person who gets really angry when anyone is breaking rules. And if I'm hangry, that might actually make it past my filters. So you like roll down the window and then tell them? Yes. Right. Correct. It's I'm just a, not helpful. It doesn't build up community I'm, for me to look at you in the grocery store and say, can't you see the arrows pointing in the direction to go that way? And where's your mask? Right? Like I, it's, it's real. And what you can't see behind my mask is I'm literally biting my tongue because I haven't eaten. <laughs> I'm thirsty, but I didn't want to be in public and need to use a public restroom. I've got a mild headache and I'm just cranky pants. Gold lame. Yeah poorly fitted right so that's I haven't really lost thing. it in the grocery store like that mine are typically related to a way that I've cared for someone who has died tragically right. and a person doing the behavior that caused another person to die tragically and so I have I just it's hard it's yep. hard for me but sometimes if I am taking care of myself with how I'm eating or like mm -hmm. there is a a whole long list of things that I cannot have my face change for at, from the mask up after I've had Starbucks <laughs> that I cannot. <laughs> and I know it costs too much and I know they're corporate, but my face not saying what I think is very helpful. The self-soothe. Yeah. It's the self-soothe. <laughs> <laughs> so I also, what I also want to say is that these are not new things. There are so many texts in the Bible about being mad that about God and God's like, you should eat some food. I made that voice up just because that's what my stomach says when it's hungry. Right. Um, right. And so there are all like, there's a whole, the book of Exodus are like these people wandering in the desert. They just left slavery and they're mad about the food. Yep. They want to go back to slavery. They're so mad about the food. Well, they want honey. They want, well, it is good honey. I did try it. It's made from figs and it's so good. But <laughs> being mad about food yeah, or, or not figuring out how to intake it properly, it's a whole thing. Jesus gets yelled at for taking corn from the wrong spot. Like cranky prophets who are told, why don't you go take a nap and I'll bring you something to eat, <laughs> right? <laughs> like... Here, we're going to send angels to attend you. You're yes. going to take a time out yes. and there's going to be a little bit of food there waiting for you when you wake up. A little bit to eat, a little bit to drink. I also think like in the book of Ruth, um, there is like a special way that the Bible tries to say that people are particularly evil if they're still crabby while they're having a feast. <laughs> like you made a terrible choice and you were fed. <laughs> evil, <laughs> unredeemable. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, just know that there's some fun stuff in the Bible. If you want to check it out. Yeah. Uh, it's all there. Well, anyway, we talked for a long time. We talked for I a hope, long time. I hope it was partially educational if you need it. And then partially also like permission, giving you to take care of your body and, you know, eat whatever it takes to stay alive. And when you can do better, do better. I think Maya Angelou said that. So and, and I'll even take uh, the, encourage the word better to come away from eating um, and say, if, you know, take, make, make a choice that feeds you now and keep making choices that, that are in good keeping yeah. with who, where, what your goals are. Um, if the more we can remove judgment from our food yeah. and the more we can understand it as a tool and as a kindness, um, the, the, the more we fight the kind of um, harm that is done in our culture around food. So shall we pray? 
Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for delicious foods and for effective foods. We pray on this day for bodies, the incredible creations that we have with organs that filter chemicals that we can't even understand. We ask that in this time of stress and anxiety and fear and sadness and grief for our country and our world, that you would help us to choose kindness for our organs that are processing so much. Help us to make gentle choices. Help us to find techniques that are kind. Help us to see the gifts that you have given us around nutrition as gifts and not combatants. For the thousands who battle with disordered eating, we ask for your blessing and your prayer of safety. For those who love them, we ask for courage and patience. For those who struggle to remember to eat, we ask for gentle reminders before hangry comes. And for all of us who have moments where we are less than who we wish to be, because we have forgotten something as simple as eating and drinking, we ask for your forgiveness. Not that we need to be forgiven by you, but that you help us to forgive ourselves. We know that you love us even in those cranky moments. And we trust that you will help us to love ourselves through them as well. We trust in you, God. And we commend our physical beings to your care and to your service. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen. Good praying. As we do each week, we will end our time together using those words that Jesus prayed when a whole multitude of hangry people gathered in the wilderness. They were, they were grumpy. They were hangry. They always forgot their food. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Know that you are beloved just as you are. Every flap, every fold, every freckle. Live forgiven. Claim your wholeness and go in peace. Love you guys. Take care.